Right, hello, welcome back uh, to another video in this series looking at models I've uh, finished building or, or where I've designed a kit. Today we're looking at kind of um, a kind of half and half one. I, I've, I've put it as a, I've labelled it as having been a kit I've built because it started off as a kit. But as we'll see um, as we go through and discuss this model, there's actually quite a bit of parts on here that I also um design so it's a bit of a, a bit of a crossover uh, but what are we looking at anyway we're looking at a 16 millimeter scale um 45 millimeter gauge model of a 2028 20, horsepower uh simplex locomotive um the kit this started from was by ps models uh it's phil sharples is the, is the is the person behind that um and I will put up on screen um, a photo or uh, from his website showing the kind of stock model um, as it's built. Um, and you'll be able to see that um, there's quite a lot of, of differences just from looking at that photo. Uh, but if we have a look at this, so this is the bag where I've got all the parts um, that I didn't use. Um, so if I just put this to one side for a minute, um, you can see there's an awful lot of bits here. Um, that came in the kit that I, I never used. Um, they were all um, replaced in some way, um, shape or form during the build. Um, and we'll discuss kind of what's what's gone on as we've gone through. You'll see kind of, um, yeah, what I changed and, and what I kept the same. I'll, I'll just push it to the back for now, the pile, and we might pick some pieces out of it as we, as we go through. Um, but yeah, so <clears throat> what I did to start with was I looked at the looked at the kit and um the by default the model the first thing i changed the def by default the model has the on off switch here um which i thought was kind of slightly unsightly um so i've moved it on mine so that it's between the frames down here now that does mean obviously you have to pick it up to turn it on and off uh, but given it's only an on off uh switch it's not direction control or anything um that seemed to seem to be okay um seems to be a reasonably good idea um the other thing i changed was as you can see the the kit had these plastic molded wheels um they've even got kind of um if the camera will focus um they've even got kind of uh, marks where they're still on the the sprue um so they're not they're not brilliant i mean they do work don't get me wrong i've used them on other on other things but you have to kind of um prepare them and file them down but what i did was i replaced them with a set of nice steel wheels. These come from um, IP Engineering. Um, I'll put links to all the, the parts, the model and all the parts I'm talking about in the in the description. Um, so yeah, so these came from IP Engineering. They use the same diameter axle, so they're just a, a nice drop-in replacement. Um, as I said, I built this one to 45 millimeter gauge. You can actually build it to 32 millimeter gauge by putting some of the, the parts in slightly differently. But at the time I built this, um it was the kind of the first thing i looked at building uh properly after i built the after i bought the garden railway uh starter set during lockdown so i built this to 45 millimeter gauge to run on the run on the same track um so yeah so while we're looking underneath uh the other thing that i added that's not from the kit is this delrin chain um so you can see the motor drives uh this axle and then the delrin chain drives the other the other axle just to give us a uh, four wheel drive uh, probably not necessary um, would have worked just as fine without but I, I just wanted to give this I'd not tried doing the, the chain for four wheel drive before so I thought I'd give that a give that a try um, so if we look at the top let me put it back together again um, <clears throat> yeah so I, I built this I started to build it from the kit um, and the first thing I really looked at replacing was the radiator now um, if you look at the parts in the kit, if we find them, the radiator is very, very simple. So it's this central piece, and then it's got um, it's got two laminations, one for each side, um, so that as you can see, the the hose the the hoses go in the top on one side and out the bottom on the other, um, which is the same as on the the, the one I printed. Um, but I decided this looked this looked really quite um simplistic compared with the, the 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 real thing the prototype i've got a number of books again i'll put links to them in the in the description showing um simplex locos and um 
yeah this is i mean it's the right roughly the right shape but it's not um, at all kind of realistic uh, for a radiator so i decided i'd put my 3d modeling skills and uh, and printing 3d printing to work um and i came up with you can see there's one on the model but i'll this was the first one i came up with where i was kind of happy with the um with the idea um there was actually a few few versions printed before this that were that were a bit a bit different where i tried to um be a bit more super accurate on on these these bars um by printing actually kind of there's like on the real thing there's like four layers of them uh this one i've just got a layer on each side and then a solid block in the middle which meant it made it was easier to clean uh but you can see size wise um it's it's about the same um it's ever so slightly different because i made it kind of a prototypical size but it's not far off um but you can see <clears throat> i've got a nice kind of filler cap compared with what they suggest you use which is this this brass piece which isn't quite right um, obviously all the the bars aren't just solid bars they're actually a, a series of discs uh, one on top it stacked one on top of the other which again is how the the real thing works um, there's all the bolt detail on the side bolt detail where it attaches to the foot plate uh, and then we have the the simplex logo uh, embossed on one side and uh, motor rail uh, Limited, which is the company that made the Simplex Locos, uh, embossed on the other. Now this wasn't actually the, the first piece I 3D printed. What I wanted to do was to see if I could make um, the logo. Um, so what I did was I scanned a picture uh, from a book, uh, converted it into the 3D model and then tried to print it out. And I'll put up a, a photo on the screen of the test print I did. Because what I actually did was print, <laughs> to start with, I printed the wrong logo. Uh, wrong logo. So there's a nice picture of a logo in the front of um in the front of the one of the books um that's a much more complicated um simplex logo and i thought that was the one on the radiator uh, it turns out it wasn't so i ended up having to um to scrap that i didn't actually use that in the end but this was the that kind of proved though that i could print out the logos at small size i could actually take them from a, a scan of a book page and print them out um, so that got me to the radiator which is nice um <clears throat> obviously as you can see on the model uh, really it's a bit more complicated than just the 3d print so it has the metal hoses the coming out the top um, and the bottom and going back into the engine bay it also has this uh, mesh cage over the top which when you get the light right you can see there's a fan um, sat behind it there we go um, that's made again from just cheap brass just cut out and, and formed to the right shape and then stuck in stuck in the right places uh, but that was the first thing i kind of i kind of did um, and then once I'd looked at that, I decided, well, if I'm going to 3D print one thing and make it look really, really nice, uh, maybe I should 3D print some of the other things. So the next thing up was these. So these were the the sandboxes that were included in the kit. Um, <clears throat> so they're just very simple, uh, solid 3D prints. Um, and what I did was I actually produced um, a kind of two-part sandbox where you've got the bottom part... Um, and then a lid um, and you can use thin wire to actually put them together and the hinge works so you can actually very gently open them um, I'm not going to try it on here because they're a bit they're a bit tricky and I don't want to risk uh, breaking it but again I made use of the <clears throat> the um, the logos if I can get the right light so again you can see uh, sim simplex on on some of the, the the lids and on other of the lids you get um if i've got this the right way up that way up, I think. um you get the if it will focus there you go um you get the motor rail limited uh text on the lid instead um so there's there's a nice nice little features and little differences um and you can see those on the the front of the loco so there's the simplex one uh, and there's a, a motor rail one uh there are two more inside so there's a uh, is that another? I think that's another simplex one. Is it? I can't. I can't tell in the shadows. Anyway, there's there's one for each wheel essentially. Um, <clears throat> while doing these, somebody on one of the forums among pointed out that in simplex locomotives, they often don't find sand in the sandboxes. Um, people have buckets of sand on the on the on here if they if they need sand. What you tend to find is that they're used for doing things like storing uh, tools or coupling pins or in many cases where you might find a mouse nest. So um, being rather silly, I then printed this, which um, 
is you can see is a flat base plate that just drops into the bottom of the sandbox with a mouse on it. So one of these, and I can't remember which of these at the front, actually has that in instead of sand. The others have a little bit of sand for the for the detailing. Uh, so yeah, so then so then I moved on and um, I printed some bolts. So this this front section here is the original um, MDF um, model. Um, but what I did was I drilled holes where there was just kind of um, laser etched circles, uh, printed some bolts, dropped them in uh, and then glued them in place and that looks really nice. Um, I was going to do the same for the side panels um, <clears throat> but um, spotted that on the original, so the original kit they've has been, had their, this engine um, cover made slightly bigger than it is on the real thing to give you space to fit the motor um, but what they'd done when designing the kit was keep the bolts um, at the real prototypical place which meant they didn't line up they're supposed to line up with the the kind of the bottom of the engine mounts um, and they didn't so what I actually did and you can if I turn it over you can see it ever so slightly was I've printed very thin overlays that have the bolt detail and everything on with the holes in the right place and the bolts in the right place for the entire side panel uh, and glued those on and you can kind of see that the hole there was um, a, a filled in the original hole which was here and then drilled a new one through in the right in the right place um, so that because it, it it annoyed me I think it annoys me less that they're not kind of um, in the prototypical part on the side because they now actually match up with the with the motor um, so yeah and then I, I printed I, I replaced uh, so I don't think this beam I don't think there was a part for the beam I think there might have been just a, a bar across the front here I'm not sure but on the real thing there's this kind of there's this beam um, so I printed that these little brackets um, are, are printed um, this detail um, of the of what you can kind of see through this hole usually um, is all is all printed, um, and then to kind of hide some of the seams for where the parts went together, I continued on. So I printed these these pieces here, uh, which hide um, a lot of the, the seals, um, the part between the parts. And then I was quite careful with the paint um, to kind of try and make these areas where, in the real thing, it's a hole through uh, blacker than the the rest of the pieces um so it, it's difficult to tell on the camera but if you hold it like that it looks obviously looks much darker this is a, a particular um kind of blacker than black uh paint i can't remember who makes it off the top of my head i'll, I'll either i'll put it in the comments um but it's meant to be kind of like the blackest of black paints and as i say in the right lights it, it really does work and, and looks really kind of as if there's a hole um so yeah, so then having done that, again, I carried on with other bits that I replaced. So these little bits in the kit stack on top of each other um, to form the the coupling block. So you can see they kind of fit into these parts uh, and stack up. Um, but again, I decided that I could probably do something slightly slightly better on the print. Um, so these are, these are printed to fit. Um, again, uh, nice bolt details and everything and they're designed to just kind of slot into the slot into the right place um, the coupling rod is a separate a separate metal turning so I actually turned these on the lathe they're just um, two millimeter silver steel rod turned down so that it's got this little little collar um, if the camera will focus um, it's got this little collar which stops it falling any further through the, the print um, but I've also to make sure that if you um, if you when you pick the local up it doesn't fall they don't fall out um, I've put tiny little magnets and then painted over them in the bottom of the coupling block and because the pins are turned from silver steel um, there's actually it's actually it there's a there's a definite magnet you can kind of hear it slot it pulling itself back in um, so that's that's quite nice uh, same with the coupling block at the back um, inside the cab again a lot of it's new. I actually managed to lose one of the kit parts for the seat, so I had to replace that. But also, this was the floor, uh, which is made to look like kind of planked, planked wood. Um, 
I don't think I've ever seen a simplex with a floor made of planked wood. They usually have some kind of checker plate metal metal floor. Um, so I printed an entire kind of uh, floor plate. Um, there's a clutch pedal. The seats 3D printed. Either. You can't see it because of the the driver character. Um, I'm not going to take him out. He's a bit of a pain to get in and out. Um, I did reuse the brake stand from and brake lever from the original kit. I it just it, it worked well enough. Um, yeah. Um, and then um, I also um, printed a maker's plate for the side. If I can get, again, if you can get it to focus, um, which again it has the motor rail detail um, on there and just glues on nicely. Um, there's one on there's one on either side. Um, and then again, just three D printed. Um, <clears throat> they're printed in a kind of odd fashion. I've got a an example of one of the motor the, the details from the side for the for the motor um, details so essentially they're focus there you go um, they're printed um, vertically um, so you get all the nice detail with this very very thin strip around the edge between kind of two pillars so they're kind of attached to the the base of the printers here um, and so it prints with these kind of two two pillars um, with the piece stretched between them and then you can just gently kind of almost tear it off this off this surrounding support uh, it doesn't take much cleaning up, but keeps it nice and straight while printing, um, and allows you to get lots and lots of nice, lots and lots of nice detail. Um, so that's how that was that was, that was done. Um, and then uh, other things that I replaced. So again, just because kind of I could. This was the original kind of axle box detail, um, and I again printed replacement parts for these, so you can kind of see uh, there's a bit more detail going on here. They actually have the motor rail written on the on the axle box it's not that you can really see it um, again a lot of this I was working from from drawings um, in the in the simplex books books I have um, so yeah so control um, there's a loco remote in here um, the light of the battery kind of just fits in here um, with the when it's charged it will fit I'm not going to try and squeeze it in now um, so that it's easy to kind of get the, the top kind of on and off. Um, the hose wire here is the kind of slightly soft um, wire used for bonsai trees, I think. You use it for kind of um, tying them to stakes and things. I got big rolls of the stuff, um, but it makes it nice and easy to kind of fabricate the, the pieces. Um, I also switched the one of the things that isn't in that pile of parts from the original kit was that both the roof and the cover of this part um, were originally meant to be in um, some plastic sheet that was in the kit but I substituted both with um, with brass uh, I just decided it would be easier to kind of uh, fold and, and curve curve the parts um, and then for painting there was an awful lot of kind of preparation of the parts making sure all the the wood was sealed and sanded smooth um, and then I went orange. Uh, this was because, as I say, we were, I was doing this partly during uh, lockdown when my eldest son uh, was, was at home with me um, and his favorite color is orange. So he had a lot of input into, you know, do we think this part looks good enough? Um, what do you think we should paint it? What color should we should paint it? And he wanted orange. Um, so I've actually used the same color orange as I did on the Alan Keith K12 um, diesel loco we looked at. Um, and that's actually co totally prototypically accurate um, because Alan Keith do have a number of motor rail simplex locos. They actually now own the, the motor rail um, assets and, and, and brand and things. But they paint all their higher locos in the same orange colour that they paint their own. Um, so there are plenty of photos of simplex locos painted, painted bright orange. Um, so yeah, so... Um, as you can see, I replaced a lot of the parts that were in the kit or added lots of details that, that weren't there. Um, but that's not in any way to um, take away from the original kit. The, the kit as it comes is brilliant. It's a nice, easy, inexpensive way to build a really good um, looking 16mm scale loco. Uh, and I think that's brilliant. And I think there's, you know, there's a lot of the kits in that in, in Phil's range um, that are the same, wagons, locos, etc. They're all really great. Uh, and I will be building building more of those. Um, interestingly, once I'd got the, the models, the 3D files for all these parts, um, I did get requests to provide them to other people. Um, I've provided full kind of detailing kits for the Phil Sharples model. 
I've also re supplied just kind of radiators for people to use on other other models they're building from other kits or from scratch. Uh, one of these radiators actually appeared in a, a Garden Rail article in October 2022, I think. I'll try and put a, a link or a picture up, um, which was nice to see. Um, I've actually written the whole of this build up in much more detail than we've had in the video, uh, again for Garden Rail, which hopefully will appear at some point uh, in the future. Um, but yeah, so um, as I say, I, it's I'm not selling the parts or anything as a whole kit. Um, it's not it's not necessarily uh, worth my while. But I, I will um, if people ask. Uh, as I say, I've been happy to kind of provide parts, uh, mostly at kind of cost or just above. Um, I will put a link in the description to a, a Google form. So if you're interested in getting any hold of some of these parts or in fact parts for many of the the models I, I i show where i've designed bits and pieces um get in touch through the google form and i'll, I'll get back to you um i'm not going to talk prices or anything in the video because obviously that changes depending on the cost of uh, of parts and materials and things um but i'm happy to provide if i can uh pieces to people uh within reason um so yeah so um as i say hopefully that's been enjoyable as i say it's a it's kind of a cross between a, a a kit I've built and a kit I've designed given the number of parts. Oh, uh, I should add before I get, the, the driver character is Christopher Clu uh, Christopher Clueless from um, Kara's Little Character range, again, available through IP Engineering. Um, he doesn't look like that necessarily. He's, he's supposed to have kind of a waistcoat on and a, and a cravat and things, but we, I ground off the cravat and did a, and changed his waistcoat into the high-vis jacket. Uh, and it looks really good. The The silver and the day glow yellow look really really good against the orange and it works it works really quite nicely i think um just a little different to some of the other uh 16 millimeter characters so yeah so hopefully you've enjoyed that and as i say um yeah if anybody wants if anyone wants parts get in touch uh and if not um look, we'll see you in the next video